I, I was asking myself, how can I be part of the change? I'm not going to change things here, obviously. Uh, it's not easy, but how can we disrupt the status quo? How can we change? How can we fill the gaps? <laughs> So uh, thank you everyone and uh, thanks Berlin for welcoming me today and giving me the floor to, to speak a bit about my story and how I ended up doing what I'm doing. Um, so I still remember the day I was alone pulling my suitcase to, to catch up the midnight train in, um, from Gebis, that's a southern region, to Tunis, the capital. Uh, where I will be studying or starting my studies in English literature. And at that time, um, my only dream was to become an English teacher. Uh, teaching is a long tradition in our family, and we love passing down knowledge, mentoring, and sharing vision. And for me, um, you, I mean, choosing English was not only because I wanted to become a teacher, but also I wanted to, uh, to connect with different cultures, to travel the world, to you know, go here and there. But as I said, I wanted to know and discover the other. It was a, really a, a whole mindset. But a few years later, I discovered the other, which was only 40 kilometers away from where I live. Um, when I started uh, teaching uh, as an English teacher in a public secondary school in a very remote, destitute, underprivileged area. Um, that, I mean, that was an eye-opening experience for me. That was um, a truth coming to my eyes, like um, the other is not in the other part of the Mediterranean, the other was next to my door. It was the people, the men and women, the teenagers I met, I connected with uh, during the three years of my teaching in Matmata. Matmata, that's a deeply rooted region in, in the south, in my town. It's, um, uh, it's inhabited by Amazir people. Amazir are the indigenous people of the Maghreb region. And Matmata was a place where nothing has been changing, only time. Only time was changing in that area. Really nothing, like the same streets, the same infrastructure, the same mountains, the same uh, landscape. And I've, I remember, like, I was, I was shocked. I was, I, I was asking myself, how can I be part of the change? I'm not going to change things here, obviously. Uh, it's not easy, but how can we disrupt the status quo? How can we change? How can we fill the gaps? And I, that's, I was a bit, I was really frustrated. And frustration unconsciously turned me into an activist. An activist that was yearning to to make change, to, um, to bring, let's say, to, to, to bring a new status in, in society. And that's how I turned into a local um, organization founder. Um, I, I found myself out of the blue, out of the blue, founding and leading an organization um, without any knowledge on how to get organized. Um, I didn't know anything about fundraising, about program development, about strategic planning. That was really something I didn't know anything about it. But I had this passion, and I had this vision. I wanted to change, and I needed to found something legal to start from. So it was not an easy mission. Uh, the organization I founded was working mainly on promoting economic and social rights for youth and women in five governorates of the South. It was not easy. I still remember a lot of uh, disappointments, a lot of challenges, a lot of obstacles, but also a lot of learnings. And 
every time I, I, I tell myself, okay, Ines, this will be the last month, the last week, the last day you're doing this. You're going to quit this and just get a life or something. So it was not easy, but I proved myself wrong. I, every time I say that, I come back with more passion and with more will to give and to lead. And seeing, seeing women in, in that town, in Matmata, in Widruf, in Merit, these are regional areas in my town, seeing them um, open up their own sto stores in handicraft and creating Facebook pages to, create, to, to promote their businesses and their products, whereas me was the satisfaction I needed. That was the mission I, I wanted to, to achieve. And somehow I, I was so thrilled to see the change they have been um, undergoing, like to see the potential in them. To, they, they were uh, living the, the, the change in their capacities and their potential. And somehow their change also was reflected in me because as they learn, I also learn about myself and about my potential. And my local, so my local commitment actually surprisingly um, brought me um, an, a national and local recognition, but also international appreciation. And a few years later, I got a legislative fellowship to, um, to start to, to work at uh, the US Congress, to, con to work at the office of Betty McCollum in Washington. And that was an experience where I learned a different approach to, to conduct change. I learned more on, on, on policy making, law making, on, on, on lobbying, which is not something we we tend to love so much, but that was a, a different approach. And I learned a lot, I, a, a lot from how to change things, but also I learned a lot from my own understanding of my own capacities and potential. And that was it. So, um, you know, this international exposure somehow helped me to learn and to evolve. And paradoxically, paradoxically, Whenever you, 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 you succeed, you start asking what's next. It's not, you don't ask, I don't know, but you don't ask the question what's next when you're failing, but when you're succeeding. So the more you achieve, the more potentials or opportunities you get. And that's how uh, two years ago, or one year ago, after finishing a sabbatical year, you know, it's, it's not really easy, to live uh, an activist, to, to be an activist. So I took a year sabbatical, and then I, I was traveling and f to Australia. And then when I came back, I was headhunted for my current position as the director and deputy secretary general of the Maghreb Economic Forum. The Maghreb Economic Forum is a think and do tank, which is based in Tunis, and we work on uh, the Maghreb economic integration and the job creation and promoting also uh, social and economic inclusiveness. So I'm not an economist, um, I don't have a PhD, and I'm running a think and do tank on the economy. And I'm evaluating, I'm mentoring, and I'm firing and I'm hiring a pool of experts, economists and doctors. So. It's a bit weird, I know, it's, it's, it's never easy. Sometimes I ask myself the question, what am I doing here? I mean, Ines, are you serious? Like you are managing a think and do tank, are you serious? So um, it's never easy. Honestly, it's, it was not, it's not an easy journey. Uh, sometimes I feel the weight of the world on my shoulders. Like every day you need to take decisions, sometimes tough decisions, sometimes ridiculous decisions. It's, it's never easy. But you learn. You, you learn to, to, I'm learning. I'm learning to, 
to uh, experiment with opportunities. I'm, I'm learning to challenge myself. I'm learning to evolve and know more, you know. It doesn't really matter what, what, did, what, you, what your studies are, what your current job is. What matters is what you want to, 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 to learn. Uh, I mean, I go to the office every day with the attitude that I can learn. It's fine, I can fix that. I'll figure out something to that problem. So it's, it's this mindset that keeps me probably succeeding in what I'm doing, but somehow it's, it's a very interesting um, experience to, 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 um, to experiment with the things. I think learning is my alma mater, if we can say it. It's the thing that keeps me going uh, from a job to another and to be flexible in the way I'm, I'm, I'm doing things. Um, and I have good news for you. I mean, in Tunisia, now on, at the Maghreb Economic Forum, we work on job creation. And uh, we discovered that, as I said that today, like we have uh, 150,000 jobs out there. But unfortunately, we don't have the right human resources to take up on these jobs. So what is the finding? The finding is, um, I think, I'm not going to blame the university or the educational system in Tunisia because I am 100% a product of that system, of the public school in Tunisia. So I'm not really coming from, uh, from an outside. But I think what we need to think about, and especially now in the, in the future jobs that we are not sure what sort of jobs we will have, is to equip the future and the current and the present generations with not only competencies, with specific expertise, but with skills that will help them navigate life. Not only professional life, but also personal life. Um, and just don't plan your careers. I mean, most of you are mid-career professionals, and, but if I can give an advice to, to any student or any um, uh, junior profile um, professional, I would tell them, don't, don't plan your career. I didn't plan to become what I am doing now. I mean, I used, I am a, I used to be a bookworm, then a turned into a teacher, and then an activist, a social entrepreneur, a grassroots leader, and then now I am a think tank, think do tank manager. So I didn't really plan to be what I'm doing now. It's, um, it's as I said, I'm experimenting with opportunities. So, um, so don't plan your career. And uh, as we say, you know, if you ask me, Ines, what will you become in the next uh, upcoming years, I would say, I don't know. I'm not planning, I don't have any plans. Uh, as we say, the grass is always greener on the other side. So I'm enjoying my ride now, but maybe in the upcoming years, I'll be doing different things. And I think you should not as well plan the future. That's it.